dazzle the art of defence, looks at the engagement of both artists and designers in the defence efforts, particularly those expressed in the First and Second World Wars. The roles that artists, designers, model makers and photographers played in the defence of Britain during wartime has perhaps been under-acknowledged. And through this exhibition I want to reflect on their contributions. At its heart is the story of Dazzle. Dazzle was a form of camouflage which came in the First World War, mainly used on ships. And it was thought that it might uh, confuse uh, enemy submarine and allow for greater numbers of ships to successfully cross the Atlantic and bring supplies to uh, England and Europe. The artistic work that went into it uh, is fantastic and is iconic as well. Norman Wilkinson was a marine artist and an officer serving in the Royal Naval Reserve during the First World War. Having proposed the idea of dazzle painting, he assembled a team of brilliantly talented artists to create the thousands of designs that were needed. We borrowed a lot of work from uh, various museums and galleries across London. A lot of it's also student and staff work, so we've got the models, the fashion, costume pieces. It's nice to see those like 3D elements. It's a bit more tangible and it gives a bit more of a, another level to the exhibition. My piece that I've contributed to the Dazzle exhibition is Dazzle Chess. It's uh, an experiment really in uh, what happens when you add disruptive camouflage to a chess set that I've previously designed. So my original design for the chess pieces were plain pieces of timber which uh, are designed to be as, as minimal as possible really. They're very, very simplified shapes. I took the opportunity to experiment with the idea of the dazzle disruptive camouflage essentially to try and spoil the shape of my chess pieces. So I've tried to include the dazzle pattern on the pieces to disrupt that outline and make them more difficult to see. Moving into the Second World War, the exhibition also explores the work of wartime poster artists such as Eileen Evans and Abram Games, who produced over 100 such images for the army. And it covers the remarkable efforts of the Allied Central Interpretation Unit at RAF Med Menem, where the work of aero reconnaissance photography and model making combined to interpret and provide vital intelligence for the armed forces. great uncle in the Second World War was in a propaganda film called Target for Tonight, which was an RAF film about the bomber crews over Germany. This is your target, oil storage at Freihausen. The photo they used was actually this part of the Rhine. So I thought as a close connection to myself, I'd do that as a model because back then they actually made models for all of those but in the film they just used a photo. I worked in Middlesex. Every day we got the German V-bombers come over or the rockets uh, going towards London. It was a bit of a touch and go thing, but everything was a new learning curve at the time. The museum has contributed to the Dazzle exhibition by uh, exhibiting our Hawker Sea Fury cockpit canopy. The Hawker Sea Fury was the last propeller-driven fighter plane that served the RAF. The bubble canopy is actually made out of a single piece of acrylic. By having a single piece of material, you're actually improving the vision of the fighter pilots and also reducing the weight of the plane. My interest in Dazzle comes from the fact that I spent 34 years in the British Army where camouflage is a key part of what soldiers do. Uh, and all of this work is represented in the gallery today. All in all, we have a wonderful show of interaction between arts between design and the, the purpose of defence.
It's my great pleasure to really warmly welcome you to this special event in which the current exhibition, Dazzle and the Art of Defence, is expanded by the inclusion of bespoke live performances. I heard a woman's voice. Only feeling I got from that voice was pain. And in my mind, there was a crack in that pain. I just entered in. That night I did some sketches about a soldier who goes blindly to war. Next day I made a sculpture of him as a bust. I carried on and I made 1,500 soldier busts. All of them was the same, exactly copy of each other, but on the other hand, each of them had their unique identity. The blindfolds was that sense of like, what am I doing? Where am I going? Who am I killing here? Will I survive? And I remember at first rehearsal with blindfolds was so difficult. And then um, that gave you a sense of feeling the peace more so, I think, because you were blinded for a bit, like your, your eyesight was completely restricted. As a director, I approached it in the sense that because Fagan felt silenced, I think she said when we were recording the piece, she said that she, for about 10 to 12 years, had been silenced. And in my brain, I was like, the best way to approach this is not through conversation. The first two to three rehearsals, an hour and a half of it was just us, and all we did was move. We're a group of students who work exclusively with sound, art. Our piece is looking at the concept of disruption. It's about improvisation a lot of the time, so there's not a whole lot of practicing you do for that. Depending on what topic or theme we're basing the performance around, um, we'll have a variety of instruments and objects that will respond to that theme. The voices that we're using are singing some uh, popular marching songs that were used in World War One and also World War Two. It's a long way to We've used a digital synthesizer to record the voices after the singers have stopped singing and we've used the synthesizer to then mask and disrupt the voice. The main aim was to have the audience feel disorientated by our performance and we wanted lots of things happening at once so we've got the projection with the light bouncing up and down we've got singers happening we've got sounds inside the water the water was there to represent the overall theme of these ships the trumpet coming in so it's all very disfigured and disrupted